Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, pre-departure webinar for James Cook University for study period 2, 2023. Welcome, everyone. And, and I can see that there are still more people logging in and um, signing in as we speak. So we might give it a minute or two. Before we officially begin, I'd like to just say hello. My name is Alex Salvador. I'm one of the enrollment and student support advisors here at James Cook University in Townsville. And joining me today is... Hi, I'm Casey. I'm also a uh, enrollment and student support advisor in the enrollment team as well. There you go. So uh, we will be your host for the next uh, 45 to 60 minutes, and uh, we will hopefully cover all the required content and hopefully give you the information that you need as you prepare to travel into Australia, Townsville or Cairns. I think we've got about just enough for now. Casey, I think we might uh, begin if that's all good with you. Sounds good. Let's go. <laughs> all right. So um, before we officially begin, I'd like to uh, acknowledge and pay my respects to the traditional custodians of the land where, where we are gathered here today. Here in Townsville, the traditional custodians are the Wulguru Kaba and the Bindal people. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. I'd also like to pay my respects to, to the traditional custodians of the Cairns area. And over in Cairns, it is the Yidinji, Chabugai, and Yirganji people. So I'd like to pay my respects to all their elders, past, present, and emerging. So a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, the information that we will cover here today um, will be um, included in a pre-departure guide uh, that will be sent to you later. A lot of the information that we'll cover will be found in this guide and um, feel free to have a look through that if you have any questions or if there's anything you want to follow up. Yeah. Casey and I will be uh, pasting some information in the chat chat box, relevant web links, links to documents, links to websites. So you can copy and paste all that information later on onto a Word document, for example. So you can uh, follow up on the information as we go along. If you have any specific questions at any point in time, you can go to the Q&A box um, in the, uh, the sort of question there already. Um, Eva, thank you, Eva. We will get back to you very soon. Uh, but yeah, you can pop your question in there and Casey and I will either try and answer it live or we will go through them as we um, go through the presentation. We have a couple of dedicated question times. All right, we've, we've almost got 30 participants, which is great. But before we start, how about you try the chat box and um, not the chat box, the Q&A, just put in there, you know, where are you coming from tonight, today, whatever time it is over there. Tell me what the weather's like. Are you coming, are you coming from China, Papua New Guinea, US, Norway, wherever. Just pop it in the Q&A so we can see that it's working. And um, the first 10 or so will give you a special shout out. Okay. So today's session really is to um, help you prepare for your arrival into Australia, okay? So um, it's an opportunity for you to meet us, the academic admi administration and enrollment team staff members, myself and Casey, and you'll get to meet a whole lot more when you get here in Townsville and in Cairns. So we'll also cover things that you may expect when you arrive in tropical North Queensland and far North Queensland as well. Some of you may have never traveled to a, you know, to a tropical place before. So it's good to just have a chat about the things that you may encounter when you get here in Townsville or in Cairns. Uh, Casey, I'm just gonna do a quick shout out to Charmaine who's coming all the way from Singapore. Hi, Charmaine. Angela Nalubulwa from Uganda. And it's hot and it's 10 a.m. and we have Madhur Surelia from India. Hello, Madhur. Um, Eva is from Germany, and the weather is great, she said. Um, Noor is coming from Kuwait. Well, we have a very diverse group of students here tonight. Uh, it's Jean from India. We have Solomon Honorable Agbo from Nigeria. Hello, sunny weather in Nigeria today. Great. We have Caitlin coming all the way from Colorado, USA. Welcome, Caitlin. Rama is from India, Binu from Dubai of Indian nationality, and we have Emmanuel Adiaba from the Netherlands, who's going to be studying a Master of Public Health and Global Development. And apparently it's warm in the Netherlands. I don't know what warm is like in the Netherlands. It's probably cold for us. I think it'd probably still be cold for us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Uh, we know we are in Townsville right now. We are welcome to Marika from Denmark. Benjamin from, hey, Ben. Benjamin is one of our ex-study abroad students. Welcome, Benjamin. Um, I'm glad you're coming back to Townsville. Best time of the year to come back. July is beautiful weather at the moment. Yeah, I'm much more comfortable. <laughs> exactly, we love it here. Marika is from Denmark and the weather is sunny. There you go. So keep typing it in there. It's good to meet all of our participants at tonight's webinar. So we shall move on. Okay, so planning and preparing to get here. By the way, all the images that we will be posting on, on this webinar are basically photos of Townsville. Uh, and this photo is taken from Castle Hill. It's that big rock or hill in the middle of the city. And uh, you can walk up there, you can ride your bike, you can drive up to the top, and you have a 360 degree view of Townsville City, looking out to Magnetic Island, Cleveland Bay, Port of Townsville, and so on. So what, that's one thing that you've got to put in your bucket list uh, for when you get here in Townsville. Yeah, walk up the goat track. <laughs> did you do that, Casey? I definitely have done it. <laughs> it's a hard track. <laughs> yeah, how long does that take? About half an hour, an hour? Yeah, about 45 minutes. <laughs> 45 minutes. Right, so basically, um, yeah, oops, sorry, we, we, we skipped a couple of things there. My scrolling is, all right. So you're coming to a new place. Many of you may have never been to Townsville or Cairns before. Use the social media to really get a bit of an idea of what it looks like, of what to expect. There is a group called Townsville JCU Internationals on Facebook, also Cairns JCU Internationals. Uh, there are some pages you can follow on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. Some of you may not be Facebook users, but I think a couple of international students have told me that even though they never used to use Facebook, they found that here in Townsville and Cairns, if you want to find out where things are, what's happening around town, what clubs to join and so on, join Facebook because the whole kind of a country operates on Facebook. So see if you can do that, set up an account and join those Facebook groups so you can start meeting some of your um, fellow students even before you get here. You can just put a post up, say, hi, I'm Eva from Germany, looking for any other German students or anyone else studying public health, for example and you can start making connections. I know in previous semesters, we've had students meet up in Sydney on the way in, and they've never met each other, but they said, when we get to Sydney, we're gonna meet at this place. And it's a good way to start having a social, social network already. Definitely good for support inside your subjects too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And you, you, you get to meet the people before you even begin your, your classes. So I'm gonna to move to the next slide and Casey will talk a little bit about this next slide. Thank you. Can I get it going? Okay. So the exciting part, once you are admitted to your course, you will be able to enroll in your subjects. Your subjects for study period two uh, are open now. So you'd be able to enroll into our uh, program, which is called eStudent to select your, student, uh, your subjects. Once you are enrolled, you do have to then also register for your classes, noting that they are two different things. Enrolling into the subject means you are registered for the, oh, you're enrolled in the subject. Registering for your classes is the individual times and days that you'll attend those classes. We do have a course enrollment planners on our webpage for courses. So they're worked out with our enrollment team and also with the college to say this is the best plan moving forward. And we do recommend them. Okay. So some of the subjects will also be delivered online. You are allowed to do a little bit of enroll, uh, subjects online, but you do have to stay within your visa requirements. So some of our JCU programs can be a little bit tricky to get around, but if you do need help, our inquiries team at our student centre, both Townsville and Cairns are able to help. Okay, so. When getting to Townsville or Cairns, uh, you are able to book accommodation. So there are different on-campus accommodations. These ones can be long or short-term and there are limited spaces. So if you do want to stay on campus, you do need to submit an application as soon as possible. Okay, next slide, please. 
Okay, the other option, if you can't get on campus, you can go for accommodation off campus. So there are multiple different um, accommodations available. Uh, you can have like temporary accommodation when you first start, and then you can find more long-term accommodations such as rentals uh, or um, share rooms, share houses. Okay, sorry, a couple of notes. <laughs> so when you do arrive and you have temporary accommodation, you need to make sure that you have the phone number for your accommodation provider, especially if you're arriving after 5 p.m., so make sure that you can get into there. <laughs> when you are looking for permanent accommodation, you need to inspect the property and in person and make sure that it is suitable for you. You may also find some friends who want to join a rental with you. <laughs> so before you decide on your accommodation, you do, we do recommend that you check the Residential Tenancy Authority website which has all the information about your rights and responsibilities as a renter in Queensland. Can I, can I just interrupt there for a second? I think um, it's best to be really, really aware that there are scammers out there that you might come across uh, someone saying, hey, I've got a room, just pay me $300 deposit and I'll make sure you get it when you, when you arrive. Please don't pay any money up front to anyone and no. don't sign any contract until you've actually physically being to the property to have a look because you know there's a thing as photoshop and this chat gpt that can make a uh, an apartment look amazing and then when you get there it's actually a real dump so please do not pay many up front we already had one student who got scammed um, i think fifteen hundred dollars no. um, just about a month ago so be aware of that that there are scam scammers out there mm, it's very unfortunate uh, mm. yeah Okay, so to book your travel, so we do definitely encourage you to get here, recommend that you arrive in time for our main international student orientation, which is Friday the 14th of July. You'll be able to meet people there, you'll be able to, there's some food and there's different little prizes and stuff that happen as well. Uh, so we do have a, oh, sorry, oh, this is kind of like two parts. Um, if you're not flying directly into Townsville or Cairns, you do have to organise your travel uh, from whatever city you are arriving in, in in Australia, noting that Brisbane is like 1,300 kilometres from Townsville and 1,700 kilometres from Cairns. So it is quite a far, far way away. We actually already had a, um, a student asking to be picked up from Cairns to go to come to Townsville. And that's, <laughs> a, that's a good, you know, 400 kilometre Car ride. Okay. So make sure that if you're bound for Townsville, you get a flight all the way to Townsville. Yeah. Go to Cairns, get a flight all the way to Cairns. Don't stop partway. <laughs> yeah. I, I think we had someone said, "Can you pick me up from Brisbane?" Can yeah. <laughs> okay. So it does say there with our free arrival pickup service. So JCU does offer for the Master of Marine Biology students. You have a earlier date because you begin a little bit earlier. And that is the 26th to, of June to the 9th of July. All other courses, besides from Master Marine Biology, you have between the 3rd and the 16th of July. Uh, for To arrange your free pickup from JCU, you de do need to complete the online booking at least three days, three business days. So working days where you'll work between Monday and Friday um, before you arrive. So the link on there, Casey, in the, in the chat. So people can just um, copy that link or click on that link. Lovely. And, and Thank you. Free airport arrival service. Yeah. <laughs> it comes with free smiles from the bus driver. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, uh, next slide. Sorry. Yep. I'm getting there. Yes. Otherwise, we do have alternative transport options available in Townsville and Cairns, uh, different airport connections, coaches, taxis. Um, and ride share options like Uber and come on. Yeah, one. Okay. okay, so the cost of living in Australia can be quite expensive. So it's very important that you carefully consider your budget before arriving to Australia. If you're looking for off-campus accommodation, so as we spoke before about the rentals, you will be required to pay bond which is four weeks worth of your rent 
and two weeks of rent in advance. So it could be six times $300 straight up before you get your keys. So you do prepare a little bit in advance. So some share accommodation uh, will include the cost of water, electricity, uh, and internet, but you do have to check with your landlord or who you're renting with. Okay, if you're moving into your own rental and you're going out on your own or with a couple of friends, your house or flat will most likely be unfurnished. So you will have to um, make arrangements to connect your electricity, phone line, gas, and um, then get furniture as well. <laughs> we do have a pretty good marketplace, uh, Facebook marketplace in Townsville and Cairns, and they do also sell some secondhand furniture and stuff as well. Just a word of warning on Facebook Marketplace, it is very addictive. Yes. Instead of buying <laughs> things that you don't want, well, that you don't need anyway. Yes. <laughs> um, so we do recommend that you have between $1,500 and $2,000 of Australian dollars available to you when you first arrive to help cover some of these costs. So, uh, we do have, sorry, in Australia, if you do rent, you do have the ongoing expenses, including rent, food, electricity, and transport. Um, as you will be on a student visa, uh, don't assume that you'll be able to work enough to be able to pay for all of those living expenses as well-paid jobs can be difficult to find. And you may not have time to fit in work around your study commitments. Uh, the minimum wage inside of Australia is around $19 an hour. And if you worked the maximum allowed on your visa, which is 40 hours a fortnight, it works out to about 365 a week and around 730 a fortnight. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Another important thing that you do have to do when you get here is uh, open a bank account. So you can open a banking account before you arrive by searching migrant banking in our different banks' web pages. So we do have multiple different banks available in Australia. So Google those ones. Um, so once you arrive, there are some near shopping centres uh, that do have banks. So in Cairns, you'll have Smith, Smith, Smith Field Shopping Centre. And in Townsville, the closest one is Stockland. Okay. When you do open an account with these banks, um, with your bank, you will need to bring your photo ID, proof of your Australian address, and your proof of enrollment. So, yeah. Some people sometimes ask, why should I open a bank account? I think for a lot of our students, when they use their cards, credit cards from home, they accrue a lot of fees. So by using a a bank card or an ATM card here, which you can use at shops pretty much everywhere. It's almost a cashless society here. You can use card to buy milk, tea, coffee, you're shopping to buy for clothes. So you're not having to pay all those extra fees. Yeah. And we do have there are like ATM machines as well if you do need to get cash out and they're available all around the cities. Uh, there is some located on the Townsville campus, but not unfortunately on the Cairns campus. Just one more note on the banks. Uh, some of you may be coming under some kind of a scholarship where you'll be receiving some living allowance, for example. It would help if you open a bank account here uh, in Townsville or Cairns because then it's much quicker, much easier to receive those um, scholarship funds. Alrighty, so you have planned, prepared, got ready. Now it's time to pack. Pack all the goodies that you're gonna bring with you. Now I've seen students come here for one semester with three massive luggages. And I've seen a student come here for a year and a half with one small backpack. Everyone is different but please make sure that you are aware of the baggage limit on all of your flights. Your international flight might allow you 30 kilos, but your domestic flight, for example, Brisbane to Townsville may only be 23 kilos. So then you might have to negotiate or buy additional um, allowance so that you're not paying massive amounts at the airport when you get here. Make sure that you pack um, copies of your flight tickets, you know, sometimes printouts, 
are always safe. You know, you think I've got it all on my phone. Somewhere along the line, you lose your phone or your phone runs out of battery, runs out of charge. Then you have a piece of paper to show copies of your passport, tickets, and, and so on. So please make sure you keep that in mind. Medication, really, really important, uh, especially people who have ongoing medication, that you are only allowed to bring no more than three months supply of your medication. Don't bring and there are boxes and boxes of it because it'll get confiscated at customs. So make sure that the only medicines you bring are only for yourself, not for your friend or whatever. Um, what you do is when you first arrive in Townsville or Cairns, if you are on an ongoing medication, you will need to make an appointment with a doctor, bring your medical documents with you so the doctor can see what needs to be prescribed and that doctor can prescribe you your medication to continue after the three month supply has run out. And we have a pharmacy or here we call them chemists on campus in Townsville and very close to, to Cairns as well. Make sure you bring your medical records and so on, okay? Now, because we will cover this during orientation, but rest assured that when you arrive here on a student visa and you get the overseas student health cover, you will be able to see a doctor, especially on campus or near the campus in Cairns without having to pay a single cent. So we'll talk about all that during orientation when you get here. Now, entering Australia, you know, Australia and customs is probably one of the strictest in the world. I've traveled in many places. In some places I've been allowed to bring meat, for example. Um, but in Australia, super strict. So no meat, no eggs, no fruit, no dairy, no flowers, no dirty shoes. <laughs> so please make sure you find out about what you can and cannot bring. If you are not sure, leave it at home. Or if you have it with you already, when you arrive at the um, customs at the airport, just declare everything. You get this um, declaration card. It will ask you a few questions. And if you're not sure, just tick yes. And you, you can show the uh, customs officers and they can tell you whether or not you can bring it into Australia. So please be really, really vigilant with that because you could get in trouble. You might have brought a piece of fruit with you that you thought, oh, it should be okay. If you don't declare that, you may receive a fine that you have to pay at customs, okay? And I think um, Casey has just put a link in the chat about what you can and cannot bring into Australia. Sure. Right, what to bring? Oh, you what not to bring. People bring all kinds of things to Australia. Uh, obviously, the, the most important thing is if you have any documents relate, relating to your health, um, if you're required to bring any original copies of your qualifications, for example, for admissions, things like that, make sure you bring all of that with you. You might, might be good to bring a uh, printed copy of your visa grant, your letter of offer, your COE, um, your driver's license would be really good to bring with you, okay? Because when you when you have a driver's license from home and you're on a student visa, you can drive here in Australia, or well, at least in Queensland, okay? So make sure you bring your driver's license with you. Um, if you have any documents that are not in English, see if you can get a certified translation of that document before you get here. Now, clothes. Um, at the moment, it's winter in Townsville and Cairns. Winter. Um, <laughs> if you can call it that <laughs> you're having a warmer than average winter this uh, this year it's probably what 26 28 degrees celsius during the day casey yeah can get up to about 30 still and we're peak our winter so <laughs> yeah there's something going on maybe global warming i don't know uh, <laughs> but anyway you can take some light um very light winter gear if you like um but you know it does get start to get warm up warm around September, October. So bring loose fitting uh, clothes with you for summer conditions. Um, there will be opportunities for you to dress in your traditional uh, clothing. There's all, all kinds of events that come up. So please bring with you a, a nice dress or something. Uh, electronics and adapters, really important. Bring converters with you. See if you can get that from the airport before you leave your home country, just to tell them, I'm, I'm going to Australia, I need a plug, I want to charge my laptop when I get there, I want to charge my phone as soon as I get there. So make sure you get adapters for things that you need to charge up. 
And of course, bring your medication with you. Or if you have a phone, bring your phone as well. Um, you can get a SIM card <laughs> when you get to Sydney or Brisbane or Cairns Airport when you get here. So that does kind of answer Eva's question earlier of, yes, please bring your original documents. <laughs> yes, bring your original documents if you're required to do so. If you're afraid to bring an original, you can get it copied and certified by the relevant authority back home so you don't lose an original paper document with you. Now, packing for your first day. So you've just arrived in Townsville and in Cairns. You try to get on a bus and you try to give the bus driver a $50 note. You will experience the, the anger of, <laughs> of a bus driver in North Queensland. They don't like you when you give them big notes. So make sure you bring some small notes with you, small denominations like $5 note, $10 note, and maybe some coins. If you if all you have are $100 bills, when you get to the airport in Brisbane or Sydney, buy a bottle of water, buy some chewing gum so you can break that $100 or $50 notes so you have some smaller denominations with you. Now, you may arrive in uh, Townsville or Cairns at night, like at 9 p.m., and you forgot to have dinner in Brisbane or in Sydney. It might be a bit hard to find a food outlet where you are going in Townsville or Cairns. So if you, have, if you can get some light snacks from the airport in Brisbane or Sydney, uh, where you're connecting into, uh, bring that, get that along, a pack of biscuits, um, whatever, it's just so that if you get really, really, really hungry, you can get, get something to eat. There's lots of uh, food delivery options in North Queensland these days, you know, uh, Uber Eats, DoorDash, Menulog. I don't use any of these, so I have no idea. Yeah. But Google it. You can yes, it. use them, Casey. Yeah, no, I don't really use it that often, but yeah, there's definitely a couple there, so they are definitely useful. <laughs> yeah, so you get to your accommodation, it's 10 p.m., absolutely starving because it's breakfast time back home. Um, so, yeah, you can just uh, get some Uber Eats or whatever into your um, where you're staying. Uh, just another reminder about um, making sure that you have the contact number of the temporary accommodation person or landlord or whatever where you're staying. Because sometimes you might have arranged for an Airbnb room and you get taken there by the airport arrival service operator and there's no one to receive you. Then you're in trouble. So it's best... These airport or other service operators are normally really, really nice people with a mobile phone who will be happy to call your um, contact person for your accommodation for you to make sure you are let in. If you are staying on campus in Townsville or Cairns, just make sure that you alert them to the, your time of arrival on campus so that they can um, alert the necessary residential advisors or assistants, RAs, so they can wait up for you and let you into your room at some odd hours of the evening. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot those in the um, Q&A box because we'll be answering them very, very soon. Now I'm gonna touch on something that I think is really, really important and some people take, tend to take it for granted. Um, your well-being in Australia is really, really important. You know, you may do things at home that to manage your stress, to make sure you are doing well uh, in your you know, psychological well-being, mental well-being. And it's good to do that here as well. So if you're a bit of a, you like going for walks back home, you should bring a nice pair of walking shoes with you. If you like to ride a bicycle, when you get here, you can start looking at getting a bicycle. If you like watching Netflix, make sure you get a Netflix membership when you get here. Things like that. If you like bushwalking or whatever. It's really important to spend time on your well-being and ask for help when you need it. So we have counseling services here. We have accessibility services for people with any type of disability, temporary or otherwise. Um, so it's really important that you keep that in mind because when you get here, you'll be entering this honeymoon phase where everything's amazing, everything is beautiful. Look at all those cute little wallabies jumping in the, in the grasslands there, beautiful, colorful birds flying around, friendly people and so on. But it's, it may not be long before you experience some kind of culture shock. We do have international students coming here who have never left their home city in their whole life. And suddenly they're in a place that's very different. So after that honeymoon phase, they realize I'm so far away from my family, from my friends, from my dog, from my cat, and so on. People sound funny. There's some strange noises in the night. So you experience this bit of a downward kind of a trend. And it's important to ask for help. 
and we are there to provide you with that support when you get here. You can come to the student center, say, look, I'm struggling here, what can I do? And the people in the student center in Townsville and Cairns can provide you with that support or refer you to the appropriate services. The good news is most people, if not everyone, has this kind of a comeback. But at some point in time, the assessments come in, the exams come in, the stress comes in, and you go down again. So it's a bit of an up and down thing that may happen. But eventually, most students uh, enjoy being here. Some enjoy it so much that they come back, like Benjamin from Denmark, who is in the uh, webinar tonight. So just keep that in mind. Now, what do you do to uh, prepare for it? Plan to make the unfamiliar familiar. So you know you're going to come to a uh, on-campus room where it's as bland as anything is basically very plain. Print some photographs of your friends and your family. You know, the old-fashioned photos. Stick it on the wall. So every time you walk into your room, you see your family, so your friends' faces or your dog's face, and it just helps you settle in a little bit. If you have a favorite bed sheet or pillowcase, bring that with you. Okay, if you uh, have a favorite meal that your mom, dad, or whoever cooks for you, learn how to cook it, prepare it here, and then share it with us. Hey, Casey. Definitely. Yes. <laughs> it would be like a good morning tea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We are welcome to uh, receiving food from people. <laughs> All righty. I think that's about the end of my section. So now we're going to open it to questions. If you, anyone has any questions. So Jean no. does have a question with no. orientation day available in any other days or not, uh, because I'll only be landing on the 18th. Okay, so the orientation day is on the 14th of July, as we said earlier, but we will be holding what we call catch-up orientation sessions. There are many reasons why some students cannot arrive on the 14th of July, visa issues, travel issues, whatever we will be holding smaller versions of the um, orientation session in a much condensed format, also read as really boring now. Um, <laughs> the big orientation on the 14th of July is a whole lot of fun. Um, we have games, we have activities, we have prizes, lots of breaks. You get to meet um, some, uh, these people we call Crocs. Crocs stands for, Casey? Twice, no, <laughs> not prepared, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> What are the champions responsible for orienting commencing students? There you go. That's what Crocs stand for. So we have current students who are signing up to become Crocs right now. So they can welcome you when you get here on the 14th of July. So they can give you the contact details. So you can contact them if you just have some simple question that you don't want to ask me or Casey. You can ask another student. Say, hey, what do I do to do this? Where do I find this? What do I do to do that? Okay. So any questions, I'm going to open up to question. Here you go. we got a question from Emmanuel. Emmanuel says, I'm supposed to start my program in February, but due to visa delay, I had to come in July. And at the time, it was said that all international students would get a welcome grant of $5,000. Will this grant apply to July entrance? If you were originally, that welcome grant of $5,000 was something from 2022. So if you have been given an offer to start in 2022 and you defer to 2023, you may be eligible for the grant. Um, the best thing would be to email studentfinance at jcu.edu.au. The email again is about to be to go on the chat box, email them, and they can tell you whether or not you are eligible. Now, don't you all go emailing student finance because say, what, $5,000? This is a bit of an incentive last year to bring people back post-COVID. Um, so if you were offered that originally, you may be eligible for it. If you have never heard of it, don't send the email. <laughs> yes, I get lots of emails now. <laughs> Alex said, email me $5,000. I said no such thing. Yeah, so. We have another person asking about where can I buy SIM cards and secondhand cars. Mm -hmm. Casey? So SIM cards you can buy from like the shopping centers. So there's different um, providers such as Optus or Telstra. You can buy them from there. You can also, I think, still buy them from like Woolworths and Coles. Mm -hmm. um, the secondhand cars, as I said earlier, we do have the Facebook marketplace that people do put up cars. Um, people still do like park their cars in areas and they have a little sign up. We do have carsales.com which is also like Queensland wide. 
Mm. Uh, Definitely never pay a deposit without seeing a car. You need to go and have it, like go and physically have a look at the car. You can also um, have like our RACQ, which is a uh, insurance place that can actually come and do a like look over the car and they can inspect the car and make sure that it is roadworthy and able to be driven on the roads in Queensland. If you are really seriously thinking about buying a car in Townsville or Cairns, go to Google and just type in buying a car Queensland. You'll most likely end up with the Department of um, Transport and Main Roads. Uh, they have some really, really good fact sheets about buying cars, including the different types of insurance. Make sure that you are aware of what insurance you need to get and make sure you, you are aware of registration rules and things like that. So yeah, I'll just add a little bit about the SIM cards. On the 14th of July here in Townsville, and maybe I think in Cairns as well, Optus will actually be coming along to the orientation. They'll be setting up a stall. They're going to have all their staff with their laptops ready to take your money. So um, you can get signed up. Provide SIM cards. <laughs> so you can sign up for a plan, and they usually have some very attractive discounts for JCU students, especially on that International Orientation Day. Just as a side note, Optus is um, catering for our lunch on the 14th of July. They are buying like 300 pizzas or something. I don't know, something ridiculous. So thank you, Optus, for your sponsorship. <laughs> There's a question, is yellow fever vaccination the only, re the only required vaccination? Depending where you're coming from, uh, may I suggest you look that up online because I don't know the answer to that question. Casey, do you? I'm not too sure. I think that it would probably be wherever they are coming from. Yeah. Uh, there are certain courses that may require uh, different type of vaccinations. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, if the, your course does require it, it will display like a certain type of vaccination is required and that is part of your entry requirements. So in your course handbook, it will say entry requirements type of immunisation. Um, not all courses will have that. So if it doesn't display it, it won't, it should not require it. Yeah. So if you're doing nursing or veterinary sciences, yeah. you will probably be required to get some kind of hepatitis, something or other vaccine. Yeah. I think there's a few that they've got to tick off, but. Yeah. There's a question. Uh, when is the orientation for Master of Marine Biology students? It is the same day on the 14th of July. We work with the uh, College of um, Science. So basically you will commence your program that week off the 14th of July, going back by the 11th, no, not the 10th. You start on the 10th of July. They start before. You, say again. I think they start a little bit earlier. That's right. You start earlier, but on the 14th of July, that's a free day for you to attend the um, orientation with all the other commencing international students. Wonderful. Now the question, same question, what is the most common bank <laughs> ATM used in Townsville? There's a lot of them, but look, Commonwealth Bank is something that is used by many students. So Commonwealth Bank of Australia or CBA. And guess what? They will also have a table at the orientation there on the 14th of July. <laughs> so um, you can sign up for an account with them. Mm -hmm. uh, we have ATMs on campus, like Casey said much earlier. If you are receiving a scholarship or stipend or living allowance from the university, the university's bank is the Commonwealth Bank. So when university transfers money to you and you're with the Commonwealth Bank, you will get your money immediately. If you're with a different bank, it might take two or three business days before you see your money. So something to think about. You might like to sign up with the Commonwealth Bank. Mm. And that is not a paid advertisement. No. <laughs> a lot of the um, banks as well, they do come with apps. So it is very handy to be able to log straight into it on your phone, be able to see everything that comes in. You can transfer straight out of it, uh, pay any bills like your registration for a car or your rent as well. So it makes it quite easy through the through the apps. It's really cool with Commonwealth Bank. They have what is called a cardless withdrawal. So you you sign up for the account, you, you verify your account on the day, but you won't get your card for about 20 days. But once you have the app, you can actually do something with it so you can go to an ATM, enter a code, and you get your money. So it's really cool. Yeah, it is definitely handy. But Apple Pay is a big thing here. So when you have your mobile phone, um, set up Apple Pay on it so you can pay with your um, phone yeah. stuff, ice cream and things. 
Um, there's another question, maybe Casey, you can answer this. Emmanuel says, should course and subject enrollment be completed before orientation? Yes, <laughs> it's a very short answer. Uh, the sooner as you are admitted, you are able to enroll. As I did put in, uh, Alex put in earlier, the course enrollment planners. So they are our uh, approved from the college plan for your entire degree. <clears throat> so those ones are what you enroll in for study period one, study period two, and then you wait until next year to enroll in 2024. Um, <clears throat> once you are enrolled, you do have to be aware of um, our enrollment close dates. So we have our Monday where it's your very first day. You have until that Sunday to make sure you're enrolled in everything. After that Sunday in that first week, you can't enroll. So we do have an enrollment close. That is purely because when you're in those subjects, they do begin. They've already begun some of their content. Uh, some of the subjects, you'll start to form groups in week two, ready for your assessments. So definitely it is a good idea to do it before orientation or in the week of orientation, our enrollment team do actually run drop-in sessions. And if you're confused, you can come down there and see our team as well. There you go. Um, I'm just gonna answer a couple more quick yeah. questions. I'm aware of the time and we do need to continue. We've got a couple more slides left, but Caitlin's saying, is there a class you recommend international students to take about the history and, and or culture in Australia? If you'd like to learn about the indigenous culture, for example, there are some opportunities to do that um, within the Townsville community. Uh, we have, for example, this festival coming up in July, uh, uh, celebrating the indigenous culture, the Aboriginal and Islander culture. So make sure you keep an eye out for that and you'll be, and ask us when you get here and we'll point you in the right direction. Uh, interesting question from Noor. I think Noor is scared of spiders and snakes and that's totally okay. Uh, what are the chances of finding a deadly spider or snake in the living accommodation or on campus? Uh, we'll answer that very soon. We have a slide on that. <laughs> yes, that's coming up. <laughs> All right, we're going to keep moving because we have about five or six slides left. Arrival. Okay. Who's talking about this? Is that you, Casey? That's me. <laughs> talk about this. Tell them all about it. Okay, so when you do arrive to JCU, whether it is Townsville or Cairns, you do have to register your arrival. So you do need to come and show up at the uh, student centres. That's where you will get your student ID card. Uh, you can get the bus passes and things like that. But once you come, like when it comes to the orientation, you will require that student ID. So it is best to get it done as soon as you actually arrive. Um, yeah, so that's at the student centers. Uh, next slide, please. So these are some of the people that you will see in our Townsville team for the very first front facing of our student center. And again, there are different things that they can help you with, are the student IDs. Uh, they can help you talk about some of the subjects and work through your course handbook, uh, enrollment and class registration. So they can help you through our system of how to do it. They can explain about the important dates and the different type of fees that you'll see as throughout your time. Uh, they can also help with your academic records after you start completing some subjects completion letters and they can assist you in how to apply for credit if you've done some um, subjects or study elsewhere. So this is our Cairns team. So you'll see some of these faces when you arrive at the student center in Cairns and there's some contact in there. So in Townsville, we are building 134, that big green one that we saw before. And then in Cairns, they're in building 8-1. So our JCU is open from Monday to Friday and we're nine to five on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Wednesdays we open from 10, uh, 10.30, sorry. <laughs> weather. And the weather. <laughs> so as it's Alex was saying, yeah, as Alex said earlier, we're not really too cold of a winter we get more of a wind chill than actual cold <laughs> you'll kind of just you'll be hot outside where it's 30 degrees but the wind will blow and it will be cold um <laughs> down to 28. yes down to 28 <laughs> um yeah so most of the time you'll see some people wearing a jeans and just a t-shirt or um a dress and a light jacket it's not overly common to need 
all your big snow jackets or anything like that. I've seen some students come with those puffy, puffy jackets. Yeah, the puffers. Yeah, puffer <laughs> no, jackets, don't, you don't might sweat them. a bit. <laughs> don't, need them. don't need them at all. <laughs> okay, so you may experience jet lag when you get here. Our best tips are obviously to arrive a little bit earlier. It gives you some recovery time, especially if you are a couple of time zones behind. And yeah, around eight to 16 days to try and recover from that time. There you go. <laughs> uh, they say if you get a lot of sun in the first few days, that really helps you recover. Well, yeah, adjust to, to the timing. And there's definitely a lot of sun in Townsville and Cairns. <laughs> yeah, plenty of sun. Don't worry plenty about that. <laughs> okay. front slide. Yes. So wildlife and noises. So there are going to be some different wildlife inside Australia, and you will hear some unusual noises at night. So the little guy up in your top right is a gecko. So he's an indoor lizard, and he can, yeah, yeah. About 10 centimetres, 15, if you've got a big one. <laughs> um, so they do make a clicking noise at night, and it is pretty continuous. The birds over to the left, the one with the funny little long legs, they're called curlews, and they do kind of screech, and it does sound like a how like a... Like a howling cry yeah. at night. And they only do that at night, right? They only do it at night. Um, a lot of these ones... It is best not to try and approach any of the animals uh, as much as like the little possum in the middle and the kangaroo looks super cute. They have very big claws and they can scratch. <laughs> for like that. Yes. And what, especially, about the what about the drop bears, Casey? The drop bears. Yeah, drop bears will be around. <laughs> so the little koalas. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> koalas. They're same thing. You yeah. probably won't really see them, but they do, of course. Uh, snakes mm -hmm. we do have poisonous and um, like well, venomous and non-venomous snakes uh, best if you do see a snake you stand still and you walk backwards very slowly away from it um, don't take a selfie with a snake no don't take a selfie with the snake <laughs> and you know what don't try to kill it a lot of students or not a lot of students people who get bitten by snakes are usually people who try to kill the snake with a shovel or with a piece of stick because then the snake gets threatened and it tries to defend itself. You are too big for the snake to eat, so it doesn't want to eat you. It wants to get away from you. It's scared of you as you are probably scared of it. So I consider myself lucky if I come across a snake because it's not a common thing to yeah. come across a snake on campus or off campus. Um, but they are around. And we have seen some majestic samples, specimens of snakes on campus. And uh, yeah. I hope you see one when you get it. Yeah, it'd be exciting to see one, but yeah. just be aware. <laughs> Don't touch them. <laughs> That's you, Alex. Oh, shopping. <laughs> yeah. I love shopping. No. So um, you probably find that in, a, in Queensland, it's really strange because everything closes early. Uh, everything closes at 5.30 p.m. But the um, supermarkets, Coles and Woolworths, are open till 9 p.m almost every night, okay? So the nearest shopping center in Cairns is the Smithfield Shopping Center, it's not too far. Um, and in Townsville, it's a Stockland Shopping Center. It's a short five minute car ride if you have a vehicle or you can get a bus, probably it takes you 10 minutes on the bus. Thursday nights are night shopping, but you can go spend all your money shopping for clothes and whatever it is you shop for. We'll tell you all about, more about that when you get here. So getting around, public transport, Wow, um, we have an amazing bus service in Townsville and Cairns. I know Benjamin, who's been here before, is probably shaking his head right now. Uh, it, it's okay. You can get around using the uh, the bus. It's not always very reliable. So please download the My Translink app when you get here. So you can um, use that to find what time the bus is supposed to be arriving and how long it will take you to get from place to place. Like I said much earlier, make sure you bring some coins or uh, small denomination notes to pay the bus driver. Everything is cash. There's no cards, go cards, or anything like that. And when you come to the student center and get your student ID, you'll get a fancy little sticker in the back of your ID card that gives you a 50% discount on buses and trains all over Queensland. 
Brisbane, Cairns, Townsville, all right? So make sure you get that sticker when you get here. A good alternative, cheaper and better for you, is to ride a bicycle, okay? You can buy a bike from the online Facebook marketplace. Um, just make sure you follow the traffic rules, wear a helmet and all those things. Again, we'll tell you all about it during orientation. We have all these um, uh, electric scooters that you can, you have an app and you download the app and you pay for it. It quickly adds up in my opinion. So yeah, get, get around on a normal bicycle. So good for your health, good for the environment. You don't have to put fuel in it and you might even stay fit already. Um, we talked about buying cars online earlier. Make sure you find out what you need to do when you buy cars online. Keep those questions coming. We'll be answering them very, very shortly. So orientation's coming up, um, 14th of July, we said earlier, right, Casey? Yep, that's it. That's the main one on the 14th. That is both the 14th in Townsville and in Cairns. They are both 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. There are two different buildings, obviously, two different locations, uh, but both of them, your registrations, there will be people there from 8.30, so you can arrive, mark off that you've been attended, and you can kind of hang around, meet a few people, go find a good spot, and get ready. <laughs> yeah, and this, we, like I said, we've got some great prizes coming up, like ferry tickets to Magnetic Island, um, passes to Billabong Sanctuary. If you're lucky, there might even be a sky jump thingy. What do you call that? Parachuting thing. Depends who. Bungee jumping? No, not bungee jumping. When you go parachuting, jumping out of skydiving. Skydiving. Yeah, we, we have all these businesses that want to promote themselves. Um, we've given away trips to the Great Barrier Reef, scuba diving, and so on. So make sure you get there early. We might even put coffee on and tea if you are, because it's cold, right? Yeah. I'll okay. <laughs> I think that's about it. So it's question time. And we just made it almost to 7 o'clock, almost to one hour. Let's see Very if there are any questions. Uh, so I think we're up to an anonymous one. I is you trip card use in Townsville? Nope, no such thing. I don't even know what that is. So uh, Me neither. I think that's probably a bus pass thing. No, everything is cash. Uh, with Uber, obviously you use the app. With taxis, they will take uh, a bank card to pay for the taxi, but buses only cash. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a question opening a bank account, wanting to transfer money from your bank account from home. Uh, it may not be possible before you come into Australia because while you can open the bank account before you get here, you have to physically go to the bank to verify your account. You have to bring your passport with you when you go to the bank to say, Hi, I opened an account, I opened an account while I was overseas, and I will verify today. Here's my ID, and then your account is active. So I'm going to guess that you cannot transfer money from your bank account from home to the Commonwealth Bank until you've actually verified your account. I hope that yeah. answers the question, Ayata. Uh, Philemon, what will be the duration of our semester, depending what you're studying? Um, yeah. If you are doing, for example, a Master of Science or Public Health, the semester, or we call them study period, study period two is, goes for 13 weeks. Okay, so you attend lectures, classes, then 13 weeks of classes, and then you have a week off, and then you have exams for two weeks afterwards. If you're doing something like a Master of Business Administration, maybe starting in trimester three, it'll be different again. So most of you will be study period two commencing students. Anyway. Yeah, and each one, we do have our academic calendars on our website. Each one of them do have all of the specified dates that you need to be aware of, such as payment due dates, the enrollment close dates, class registration close, uh, census dates, withdrawals dates. So it's got all of it there very clearly laid out. And our inquiries team in, at the front of the Student Centre can help you understand all of those dates as well. Perfect. Yasin is saying, are there any student clubs and things around on campus? Yes, plenty of student clubs and activities if you're into soccer, if you're into chess or go, whatever that game is, the go club, uh, if you're into, I don't know, animals, there's a zoology society, there's a psychology society, there's a law society, there are cultural groups. When you get here, you will have the opportunity to sign up for many of these clubs and societies during orientation week. 
So 14th of July is a Friday. The following week is our week, orientation week, um, where you will be um, moving around the campus with all the brand new Australian students. And there will be a big market day, usually on the Wednesday. During that market day, there will be a couple of hundred stalls set up, people wanting you to join their club or their society. So it's a real opportunity for you to join as many clubs as you like. And that's a really good way to make friends and form connections with other international students or Australian students. So yeah, make sure you do that. There's definitely a lot of clubs. I think uh, last market day, there was up about 60 different um, kind of little areas and tables. So there was definitely a lot. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Francis, welcome. Francis coming from Papua New Guinea. Francis, um, you'll be based in Cairns, arriving in Townsville first. Yes, you can open your account and verify it here in Townsville and activate it here. And then when you go to Cairns, your account is already activated. It'll be all good. Casey, there's a question from Quinn, wondering if uh, Quinn can do the enrollment, student ID card, and pay the rest of the tuition fee on orientation day. Yeah? I think so. Yeah, I so you, yes. you can do your enrolment, your student ID card, and everything at the student centre. At both, at, at both our student centres, we do have computers that you can log on to. And you can do your enrollment. You can have someone there who steps you through how to do it. So that is fine. And then paying your fees, you can do that at the counters as well. Yeah. Now, been a question about how many days of classes are there in a week. Look, it's all different depending on your study program. You might have three full days and two days off if you're lucky. Or you might have five days of classes with lots of gaps in between where you can do all your readings, all your assignments and all those kinds of things. That's where it's important that once you do enroll in your subject to register for your classes, because it will show that one class will have four different options for the tutorials or, and you'll select ones that do match with your timetable and all of your classes that you've picked. Yeah. Uh, there's an interesting question right at the very end there because this yeah. will have to be our last question. Uh, the person says, sorry, I joined the meeting very late. Please tell me about wildlife, such as snakes, et cetera, in Townsville. I'm really scared of them. Thank you. Okay. So there's definitely, yes, there are snakes in Australia. Uh, I think there was like, uh, yeah, there's, there's many different types. Uh, it is common to, well, it's not as common to see them just scooting around on campus. Um, more common if you're, say, outside of, um, town a little bit and the bush walk, yeah, bush walking or something like, especially if you're just going up to a random park, like if you go to Pluma or something, you might see a python go across. Um, not as common on campus, but obviously just be aware that they are around. And look, I, I've lived here for a long time 35 years I lived in Townsville. I've never been bitten by a snake. I don't know anyone who has been bitten by a snake. No. There you go. I <laughs> that says a lot. Hey, what about you, Casey? Have you ever been bitten by a snake? Never bitten by a snake. No. A <laughs> Pardon? No, nothing, or a spider? No, no, but stay away from redback spiders. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just don't be touching any spiders. No. <laughs> but we're fine. Look, we'll tell you more during orientation day. And uh, these are the fun things that we can talk about. We might even bring some snakes in for you so you can desensitize yourself and touch a little python when you get here. All righty. I think that's about all we have time for. It's now 6.58 p.m. We did say this goes for one hour. So thank you all so much for joining the, um, the webinar. All our contact details are now on the screen, I think. Or... Sorry. No? Is that me? It's coming. Oh, there you go. That oh, there it is. Me. Yeah. So email enrollments at JCU if you have any questions in the meantime. But look, join the Townsville JCU Internationals or the Cairns JCU Internationals Facebook groups. I've got my phone ready to approve you if you join right now. Um, well, look, we've got a couple. I think, yeah, we got Mar Mar Marika and Lisa are joining. Join now and I will approve you. Please do not sell anything like sunglasses or shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, that's about all. Any final words, Casey? No, I'm just excited to have you all coming and looking forward to meeting you and supporting you as we go through your course. Yep. All right. Thank you for coming and we will see you when we see you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.